In our last video, we started working on a problem on variance analysis. In this video, we're just going to continue that problem. So in the last video, we worked through the materials variances, and we said we take the actual quantity, actual price, actual quantity, standard price, standard quantity, standard price, and we kind of take the differences in those, and we find our variance. And so for materials, actual quantity, actual price purchased, actual quantity, standard price purchased, and it gave us a variance of $4,000, unfavorable in this case. Uh, for quantity variance, it was actual quantity, standard price used, times standard quantity allowed standard price uh, used, and it gave us a favorable variance of 1000 Let's go ahead and work through the labor rate and efficiency variances for this problem. And as always, the problem's posted right below the video. So uh, it says compute the direct labor rate and efficiency variances. And to do it, I'm just going to set up a little chart very similar to my materials one. Only this time, I won't do two separate prongs. I'm going to put them all together. So I'm going to do AQAP, AQSP and SQSP. And what you might find is if you look through your textbook, they might use different terms here. They might have A, H, A, R, actual hours, actual rate. I just like to use the same one for everyone. Just, so I don't have to memorize as much. Actual quantity of labor is the number of hours. Actual price for labor, yeah, we could call that the labor rate. But AQAP, just to be consistent, it's just less for me to remember. So uh, let's work through it and let's figure out the actual quantity of labor that we use, the actual number of hours of labor. So part C is all about labor. It says the company employs seven employees to work on the production of sheets. During December, each worked an average of 160 hours at an average rate of $12.25 an hour. Okay, so we had seven employees who worked 160 hours. The actual quantity of labor then is seven times 160, it's 1120 hours worked by my employees. So let's fill that in as my actual quantity. It's 1120 hours. My actual price that I paid them was $12.25 an hour. AQ times AP, 1120 times 12.25. I paid $13,720 in wages. That's what I actually paid. $13,000. $720 in wages. So again, my AQ remains the same, 1120. My standard price, well, how much am I supposed to pay my employees? I'm supposed to pay them $12 an hour according to their standard rate. So 1120 times 12 gives me a total here of 13440. Now, comparing the two, I've got to say, okay, is this a good variance or a bad variance? Is it favorable or unfavorable? Well, first, I've got to figure out the amount. And the difference there is 280, just 13,720 minus 13,440. Now, I've got to say, is it a good variance or a bad variance? Is it favorable or is it unfavorable? And the answer to that question is, well, let's look at what's different. The quantity is not different, so that's not an issue. I paid 12.25 per hour. I'm supposed to pay $12 per hour. I paid too much. I overpaid. This is an unfavorable variance. Now, this is called the direct labor rate variance. And it's just I paid them a higher wage rate than what I was planning. Over to the direct labor efficiency variance. Uh, standard price remains 12 bucks. I've got to deal with standard quantity now. And my standard quantity, I answer the same question. Given the actual level of output, the fact that we actually made how many trampolines? 2,100, I believe. Yeah, 2,100 good sheets. Uh, given the fact that I actually made 2,100 good sheets, how much labor should I have used? Well, I made 2,100 sheets. And the labor is supposed to take half an hour, 0.5 hours. So 2,100 times 0.5 is how much time I should have taken. 2,100, that's a 2,100 times 0 0.5, and that is 1050. So I should have taken 1050 hours. Now let's do some math here. 1050 times 12 
is 12,600. The difference being 840. So I've got an $840 efficiency variance. Now I've got to say, is this a good variance or a bad variance? Well, we don't say good or bad. We say favorable or unfavorable. And the answer is, this variance is unfavorable. The reason it's unfavorable, I, don't, I compare the price. They're the same, 12 and 12. The quantity, though. I took 1,100 hours to do what should have taken me 1050. I was 70 too many hours, right? I, I did too many hours of work. I was not efficient with my time. This is an unfavorable efficiency variance. Now, a few possible causes. Okay, for wages, I paid them 25 cents an hour more than I thought. Why might that have happened? Maybe because they got a raise. Maybe the union contract went up and I got to pay them 12.25. If that's the case, I should change my standard. Maybe they just got paid for more overtime. They had some unexpected amount of overtime. Uh, if that's the case, then I keep the standard the same and is it, it is an unfavorable variance. Uh, perhaps I have a higher proportion of experienced employees to inexperienced employees than normal and I'm just, you know, have more employees that have moved up the pay scale than, than what I'm used to. That's a possibility as well. So those are three possibilities. Uh, in terms of the efficiency variance, uh, very likely my employees just took longer to do the job than expected. Now, the question I need to ask is, is half an hour the right amount of time? You know, should it really be more like 40 minutes that I should allow, like 0.6 hours or something like that? Uh, is 0.5 hours the right amount of time to do this job, or is it just that they weren't as efficient? Maybe there was an accident in the on the shop floor and it kind of ate away at a lot of their time or slowed down, or maybe there was some machine problems. Why did I miss? It's unsure, but certainly the most obvious option would be people just weren't working as quickly as they should have. So those are my labor variances. We're going to do one more page for, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, blanking here, uh, overhead variances. So let me uh, see if I can't get us into another page here. There we are. So for overhead variances, much the same as labor variances, we set it up in the same way. So I'm going to just set up my overhead variance. Oh, by the way, we could do a total variance here of, uh, what would that be? 10, 1120, unfavorable. That's my overall labor variance. Let's do our overhead variances now. Again, a Q, a P, a Q, S, P. SQSP and let's move up and look at our overhead. So it talks about overhead in bullet point D. It says variable overhead is assigned to the sheets on the basis of direct labor hours. Variable overhead costs during November totaled 3050. That's an actual number. My actual overhead was 3050. And I'm going to use a lot of the same information I used when I did my direct labor hours. In other words, a lot of the information is going to come from uh, C. So my actual quantity of labor just comes from above, 1120 hours. That's how I'm driving my overhead. Now I know my total that I actually paid here too was, I think it was 3050. Yeah, 3050. I actually don't need to figure out a price per hour. But I can, 3050 divided by 1120, not going to be an even number, 2.723, $2.72 an hour uh, is my actual price for overhead. Uh, AQ, again, 1120, the standard price for overhead, well, the standard rate for overhead is 3 bucks an hour. I just got that from my standard rate card. 11.20 times 3, 33.60. So comparing these two, I'm 3.10, and I gotta say, is this favorable or unfavorable? Well, it's 3.10 different. My standard price is higher than my actual price. This is a favorable variance. The uh, overhead variances, 
the variable of red variances, I should say, are called spending and efficiency variances, and this is the spending variance. So this is my variable overhead spending variance. Uh, on to my last prong here, my standard quantity. Well, I'm using direct labor hours as the driver. Again, 2,100 uh, sheets made. I, I got to answer the question, given the actual level of output, how much, in this case, we use labor hours, should have been used? Well, it should take half an hour. Uh, I made 2,100 units. That means 10,000 or 1,050 hours, the same SQ as was in place for labor. My standard price is 3, 1050 times 3. Thirty-one fifty. Thirty-one fifty compared to thirty-three sixty is two ten. I'm going to say is this favorable or unfavorable? Well, I actually took uh, eleven hundred hours. I should have taken ten fifty. I used too many hours. This is an unfavorable variable overhead efficiency variance. So. Uh, I'm to the end now. And just a quick uh, trick here. I've always done it comparing the number that's different. Right? I said, okay, I'm going to compare the 3 to the 2.7. My standard is higher cost than my actual. That means that's good. Here's a little trick. If the number on the right is bigger, it's favorable. If the number on the left is bigger, it's unfavorable. So again, if right is greater than left, favorable. If left is greater than right, unfavorable. That rule ought to hold for you. I like to do it by kind of analyzing the component parts, but if you're not sure, you're feeling shaky, that's a trick to get the right answer. All right, I hope this video has been helpful for you. This short series on uh, variances as with everything in accounting, it's a matter of practice. I'm sure you'll have problems in your text. I'm sure you've done problems in your class. Practice, 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 and it'll make you a better accounting student. That's all for this part.